I'm at River Oaks Point Drive in South Moorhead, and Marv, I think the picture here pretty much tells the story. This is what this neighborhood has been dealing with actually for the last two weeks. The river completely surrounding homes in this neighborhood. Bob Johnson has a break in his dike and he doesn't know how much longer he can hold the water back. We have a, a break in the earthen dike and so we're in big time trouble right now. It's eroded over here and uh, when it goes, out we go. <laughs> In Oakport Township, north of Moorhead, the situation has also gone from bad to worse. The water came up so quickly in some parts of Oakport Township today that homeowners had to call for the Coast Guard and Sheriff's Department to come and evacuate them. Homes have been lost to the flood. Others are trying to save what they can. This is a battle these people will not stand to lose. Some will not leave. Uh, just the worry factor, I guess it's, it's better to know where you sit even if it's bad than sitting down and not know where you're sitting. Children who are witnessing history take the cold, long ride in a boat, leaving their homes behind. At this point, no one knows what to expect. And there are new concerns tonight about water flowing overland from the Cheyenne River near Horace. Water from the Cheyenne has been entering the Wild Rice River Basin, flowing over several roads. These breakouts are causing extensive overland flooding. Fargo officials are concerned that the water will be heading to the Red River, and that will complicate things in the city. Well, some serious concerns at Fargo's 2nd Street Dyke this afternoon. When, around 1 o'clock, workers noticed that water was leaking under the levee in one area due to, caused by the high river levels. Northern Improvement was quickly called in to build a containment dike around the area. Crews were able to deal with the leak, but it may not be the last one. Anytime you have water coming through uh, from the riverside to the backside of a levee, it's a pretty serious situation. So, uh, oh yeah, any one of these, even the small ones that uh, we haven't uh, taken any action on, we're monitoring closely. Failures are going to continue to happen. When we're under siege this long, uh, things are going to happen, and they're continuing to happen all across the city. So, we have to just deal with them as they occur. As you can hear and also see behind me, heavy equipment has moved into downtown Fargo, putting up a dike first on uh, First Avenue North, which is on my right, and on my left they'll be swinging around near City Hall and moving on past Centennial Hall attached to the Civic there. And this happened all uh, this afternoon after some concerns when the Second Street dike developed some problems. Well, we had a serious problem here this afternoon, and uh, we have temporarily resolved it. We don't have a lot of faith at the present time in the rest of the dike down here, so we're putting up a secondary containment dike uh, a little higher ground here. The, the water is really high uh, as of right now. We just hit our 100-year flood at 38.3 on the adjusted gauge, so that's the right number now. We're at 38.3. We expect the river to go up about uh, four to nine more inches, and uh, we're, we're, we're in new ground now. Nobody's seen it in this century. I think we can handle what's coming from us from the south and we can just get this out of here a little bit and get a little breathing room. But uh, what it's going to do is create the siege, extend the siege a little bit longer.